Our next topic is paging. The N gap paging message is represented in table on the screen. Only the UE paging identifier and TAI list for paging fields are mandatory, so the remaining fields may be excluded from the message. The base station uses the UE paging identity to address the UE within the RRC paging message. This identity corresponds to a 5G STMSI, which is concatenation of the AMF set identity, that is 10 bits, the AMF pointer 6 bits, and the 5G TMSI 32 bits. The 10 least significant bits LSB of the 5G TMSI are used to determine the paging frames and the paging occasions for the UE. The AMF is responsible for ensuring that the population of UE are allocated 5G TMSI values which evenly distribute the UE across the set of paging frames and paging occasions. The 5G STMSI is used instead of the IMSI when addressing the UE because it is temporary identity. The use of a temporary identity helps to improve security by avoiding exposure of the permanent UE identity. In contrast, the S1AP paging message used by 4G allows the UE to be addressed by either its IMSI or STMSI. The paging DRX field can be included to ensure that the base station determines the correct DRX pattern being used by the UE. The base station broadcasts the default DRX cycle duration within SIB1. The base station also provides this default DRX cycle duration to the AMF during the NG interface setup procedure. The AMF may negotiate a UE-specific DRX cycle during the NAS registration procedure. This negotiation is transparent to the base station, so the base station may not know the DRX cycle being used by the UE. The AMF can also use the core network assistance information, parameter structure to provide the base station with information regarding a UE-specific DRX cycle. This parameter structure can be included within an NGAP, Initial Context Setup Request, UE Context Modification Request, Handover Request or Path Switch Request Acknowledge Message. The Tracking Area Identity TAI list is included to ensure that the base station broadcasts the RRC paging message using the appropriate cells. In many cases, all cells belonging to a base station will belong to the same tracking area. However, there are also deployment scenarios where the cells will belong to different tracking areas. For example, a base station which is shared between operators may have one set of cells belonging to a first tracking area for the first operator and another set of cells belonging to a second tracking area for the second operator. The paging priority can be included to prioritize specific paging messages at the pay station. The priority can be configured with a value from 1 to 8, where 1 represents the highest priority. The AMF deduces a priority level from the Allocation and Retention Priority ARP indicated by the SMF when requesting the AMF to page the UE. Specific services are likely to have high ARP priorities, example, mission critical services and multimedia priority services. The UE radio capability for paging provides the base station with information regarding the operating bands supported by the UE. This can be used to reduce the number of cells which broadcast the RRC paging message, that is, there is no need to broadcast a paging message on a carrier which the UE does not support. This parameter structure allows both 5G and 4G operating bands to be listed. The 4G operating bands are applicable when the 5G core network is connected to a next generation E-Node B. 
that is a base station which supports the 4G air interface. The assistance data for paging can be used to provide a list of recommended cells. This list can include cells which the UE has previously visited and it can also include cells which the UE has not previously visited. In the case of previously visited cells, the AMF specifies the time that the UE spent in each cell. If the time is greater than 4095 seconds, then the AMF signals a value of 4095 seconds. The base station can use this information when selecting the cells to broadcast the RRC paging message. The AMF derives a set of recommended cells from information previously received from the base station. A base station can provide the AMF with information regarding recommended cells and RAN nodes for paging within the end gap UE context release complete message. The AMF stores this information for any subsequent paging procedures. The assistance data for paging can also be used to provide the base station with information regarding the retransmission of NGAP paging messages. The AMF can specify the current paging attempts count and the total number of attempts which are planned. The AMF can also specify whether or not it plans to change the scope of the geographic paging area on the next paging attempt. The base station can use this information to help define its own paging strategy. For example, if the AMF is approaching its final paging attempt, then the base station can increase the priority of the paging procedure and potentially broadcast the RRC paging message across an increased number of cells. The paging origin flag is included when the paging procedure has been triggered for the PDU session, which is associated with a non-3GPP access technology. The UE uses the 3GPP access network to respond by sending a NAS service request message this message indicates whether or not the PDU session can be reactivated using the 3GPP access technology. Once the base station has received the NGAP paging message, then it determines an appropriate paging frame and paging occasion for the RRC paging message to be scheduled across the air interface. The base station uses downlink control information DCI Format 1 underscore 0 to allocate PDSCH resources for the RRC paging message. The CRC bits are scrambled using the P, R and TI to indicate that the PDSCH resource allocation is applicable to the paging procedure. Here I conclude this topic. Hope you understand all the concepts clearly. Meet you in the next topic. If you have any queries, please get in touch with us by typing your comment in the comment section. Thank you for watching. Do like and subscribe to our videos. So what are you waiting for? Join us for the course and do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. Also, if you like our videos, don't forget to hit the like button and share our videos.